In 1981, Jean Webb asked the families of St. Joseph Parish to make angels for the Christmas tree. It's like a, a reverent thing when we can enhance their Christmas for the parishioners. And since I was interested in projects of this nature, I said yes. I made an angel that was eight by eight feet. <laughs> I was interested in pleating paper. So I found that if I pleated paper and crossed it at a 90 degree angle, that that created a strong basic structure. Then on top of that, I did the detail work of the gown. I didn't know if it would stay up, but it worked. <laughs> and we had it for five years. After a while, paper begins to age. And so after that, we went to fabric. In the next set of angels, we made eight and that was made by a group of the church women. Those worked out well, they were in profile. They were partly fabric, partly paper, and again the paper began to age. So around 2000, I said to Jean, let's go three-dimensional, <laughs> having no idea what that meant. At first I had thought, let's make a cast of feathers, and because uh, I've cast things made molds and cast things, but that would have been too heavy and they would, would not have the look that we wanted. I learned how to sew in a freshman sewing class <laughs> and I liked sewing. So that is really the basis of all the feathers which are double knit polyester fabric bonded to a backing to give it some form. These are the feathers. So we make all the feathers based upon patterns that we've made. This layer here is where we're working now. So I would start putting them, gluing them here, here, and here. We started out with a framework stuffed with cotton. And when we picked it up, it just flopped. And right away we knew that wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to hold up. So I came up with the idea of using expandable insulation. So we squirted the insulation all throughout the wing framework. And when it hardened, I carved it down into a wing shape. It's been great working in here. Uh, we can get it as messy as we want and, and it doesn't mess up the rest of our house. There are pulleys and we hang an angel and, and work around it, try things out. That's important when you're doing something three-dimensional. I'm always trying to uh, do it better. <laughs> you know, some things that we've tried, the idea was good, but it didn't uh, work. <laughs> we didn't have angels one year because of a decision I made. But after a while, you get to learn your materials and what to expect from them. You also refine your thinking so that you've sort of selected the choice ideas, the ones that are, are going to work the best. The rod goes here and into the, into the wing and down, anchored down here in the wing. And this is the way you hang there, sit in the floor. There you go. That's the, all you have to do to hang it. And this is foam board. It's used for the body. And even using foam board, it, they weigh a little over 50 pounds. <laughs> the hair was a rag mop that we soaked in Elmer's glue and um, styled it, put it on the head, and then uh, when it dried we covered it with spackling plaster and painted it and it looks like real hair. The arms which come together on the trumpets we found were wearing at the shoulders that they were just being held in place by the cloth 
And so Jean designed an arm that has an elbow. <laughs> then she designed a hand where the fingers can be shaped because there's a foundation of wire. The hands have to come up and hold the trumpet. And we put Velcro, and they worked pretty good, but the Velcro gave out. And then I found some round magnets like a washer with a hole in the middle, so I put, slipped them in the glove and stitched them in. Jean put magnets into the tips of the fingers so that we didn't have to pin the fingers together. The trumpets were wobbly, so I took a spike and I turned the angel on her, on her tummy and hammered a hole down through her head along the stem of the trumpet and poured it full of Gorilla Glue. And Gorilla Glue expands when it dries, so it expanded inside the head and now they're rock solid, they won't move. And we'll put the cape on. Oh, okay. Jean and I make a good team because she has the construction skills, I have the sewing skills, and so it's, it's a good combination. I can usually come up with um, this inner structure, but it, the wings and the gowns, and the, that makes it. It really does. Jean and I put the wings and the angel body into wedding gown storage bags. And the team comes and transports everything to the church. Our people really have a great sense of ownership uh, for our parish and for the church. It's not just somewhere to go on Sunday. They, are, they feel very much that they are part of it, that they have a responsibility to the parish, to their fellow parishioners, to all of the endeavors that we have here. I'm always pleased when I see them up. It is a lot of hard work. I have to watch myself because I'm checking things not quite right. <laughs> Something we can do better. <laughs> but uh, it, it is really a good feeling of satisfaction to see them decorating the church at Christmas. What they mean to me personally is to bring about a sense of peace and serenity and uh, almost a preview of what heaven is going to be like. Uh, they bring the spirit to the church and lighten it and bring joy. It just like brings more Christmas spirit and stuff. I mean, just they're glorious looking and just the glory of Christmas. Oh, I think they look beautiful. They're really creative. Yeah, I really enjoy them because I think everybody has an angel watching over them. I'm very pleased with them, and I think they really give the feeling of Christmas something special. I'm happy to do it. I do it for our parishioners, and I also do it for the glory of God. That this is a way that we can say thank you for all the gifts that we receive.